Do you want to know how to endure hardships? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. When Kesha left ABWE's Hospital of Hope in West Africa, she had more than just a healed body. She also had a burning hunger and unquenchable thirst for spiritual truth after watching the Jesus film, which the hospital plays for all its patients. The story of Christ's suffering for her sins struck her deeply. Kesha was illiterate, but she was vocally adamant that she needed to know Jesus in a personal way. So the hospital team gave her an SD card with an audio recording of the truth in her own language. Not only did she drink in the truths spoken in the word, but she shared the recording with her friends and family. With great urgency, she also began pleading with the hospital to send a team to her village to teach and a Bible study was started. When her village chief's son fell desperately ill and received life-saving compassionate care at the hospital, the chief's wife also began to attend the Bible study, curious to hear more about this gospel. The chief's wife came to salvation through the study. Then the chief began attending and also came to a saving faith. Today, there are at least 50 believers in Kesha's village, and the numbers continue to grow. What began as one woman's plea to learn more about the Word of God has changed her entire community. Today, we have two alternative gospel readings one for the third week in Ordinary Time, and the one for the memorial of St. Timothy and St. Titus. In the Gospel according to Mark, Jesus was alerted by some in the crowd about the presence of his relatives outside the house. He seems to ignore his own relatives, busying himself in preaching to those gathered. Let us not be misled into thinking that he did not love and respect his relatives, especially Mary, his mother, but he used this opportunity to teach his listeners about a higher reality, one's relationship with God. When he said that there are two greatest commandments in the book of Matthew, he spoke about loving God first and then neighbor next. He wants us to realize that God's love for us is unmatched and our response is to make an effort to recognize this and establish a deeper love for him. For he created man to share that love and unity with man and he even sent his only son to sacrifice himself to show man how much love he has. If we are to dimension his love and understand it fully in our reflection time, we will be able to express unconditional love for our family members and love those around us, especially those difficult to love. And the only way to make our love a reality for a seemingly abstract God who we do not see is to first acknowledge our gratitude for all the blessings in our life. Make a list of things, situations, people, and events in your life that you are grateful for and read this every day during your prayer time. With the Holy Spirit's grace, that love you have for our God will grow immensely because you realize that while problems in your life persist, the blessings that you have far outnumber, outweigh, and outmatch the problems you have and are experiencing at the moment. You also will understand that the struggles you are going through right now have the, well, blessings of our Lord. This means that He allows pains to be experienced by you because all these are gateways to another blessing forthcoming in some form, not necessarily material, but definitely defining and life-changing. James reminds us, Consider it all joy, my brothers, when you encounter various trials, for you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance and let perseverance be perfect so that you may be perfect and complete lacking in nothing it is this love for god that has led the 72 disciples in today's gospel reading to endure hardships to preach to unbelievers the gentiles and to the jews and romans and wherever as far as they could go their zeal was exemplified by timothy and titus both converts and co-workers of Paul in today's alternate first readings. The young church at that time was filled with tension, confusion, and experiencing a lot of birth pains. The young Timothy of Greek and Jewish parentage was made bishop and met his martyr's crown when he tried to pacify an unruly crowd in his diocese, if you may, 
Ephesus during a pagan feast day. Titus, on the other hand, was a Greek-speaking Gentile. He was so dependable and trustworthy that Paul appointed him to lead works in Corinth, Crete, and Dalmatia. An insightful man who could handle problems with grace, he was made bishop in Crete, organizing the church and correcting abuses there. As we continue our reflection, we consider that the way to serve in our parishes and communities, families and workplaces, with the patience, charity, and zeal of Timothy and Titus, never backing down or giving up despite difficulties, is to first and foremost love God truly. Only then can our lives be transformed. Only then can our disappointments disappear. Only then can we love those around us with the same fervor that emanates and is exemplified by our God. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, the Son of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Heavenly Father, deepen my love for you. Let me count my blessings today so that I may understand the immensity of your love and the minuteness of my problems. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.